An outfall is an outlet that discharges stormwater into receiving waters such as a river, lake, estuary, or ocean. Dare County, North Carolina has eight ocean outfalls that can be found in Nags Head and Kill Devil Hills. These outfalls are connected to a series of pipes and drainage ditches that transport stormwater runoff from the landscape. As the water travels across parking lots, roadways, and properties, it has the potential to pick up pollutants that can impair water quality and pose human health risks to swimmers. The UNC Coastal Studies Institute has been collecting data for an ocean outfall stormwater monitoring project. This project is designed to give us a better understanding of the flow rates and delivery of water through outfalls during both ambient and storm conditions. In addition, the project provides us with valuable data on the key microbial pollutants found in stormwater, their likely sources, and how they are delivered through storm events. The UNC Coastal Studies Institute has deployed equipment for monitoring stormwater runoff at each of the eight outfalls in Dare County. ISCO automated water samplers were deployed at each of the stations and act as a control center for each site. Small solar panels continuously charge batteries that provide power for the sampling equipment. The ISCOs can be programmed to automatically take water samples during significant rainfall events and store them within the unit until they can be taken to the lab for analysis. While at the lab, water samples taken throughout the storm event are tested for levels of E. coli and Enterococcus, two bacteria used to indicate the potential for waterborne illness. The data collected in this project have demonstrated a significant loading of indicators of pathogens to the ocean following rain events and also illustrated the pattern in which they were delivered. This information is critical in designing methods to treat and mitigate the impacts of stormwater runoff. This valuable data was used by Moffat and Nickel Engineering to design an experimental stormwater management structure, which has been constructed at Conk Street in Nags Head, North Carolina. Now in the next phase of the project, the Coastal Studies Institute will begin assessing the efficacy of this management structure and building a closer link to conditions in the ocean following stormwater events. These are the Teledyne ISCO automated water samplers. These are basically the control center for the entire system we have below ground. We have two of them because there's two areas of the system we're monitoring. One is the bypass area and one is the filtration area. Both areas have a velocity module and a water quality sonde that measures pH, temperature, and conductivity. Also attached to both sections is a suction hose that comes to one of these pumps. We can program these pumps to take 24 individual water samples throughout a storm that will be stored in the ISCO until we can take them back to the lab for analysis. Or we can come and take a single grab sample at any time. This entire system is charged by two solar panels and the energy stored in two car batteries. So we can program this machine to take water samples throughout a storm or we can come on site and do a grab sample. Uh, the grab samples time will be recorded in the machine along with the flow data and the water quality data at that time. The machine starts by purging the line, blowing air all the way through it to clear the intake. Then it will suck the water all the way up to the line. This line is approximately 25 feet long. All the instruments are about 15 feet below ground. This is one of the three access points. Let's go down and take a look. Here we are in the filtration area. This is one of 12 stainless steel boxes that contains layers of filters that the rainwater will pass through before exiting the final outlet to the ocean. Also equipped in here is one of the water quality signs that's attached to the ISCO. And at any time, the data from this can be downloaded Inside this protective PVC pipe, there's a water quality sign that measures temperature, conductivity, and pH. We're still in the filtration area. After the stormwater runoff is filtered, it exits through these two pipes to the final bypass area. This pipe is outfitted with a stainless steel scissor ring. Attached to that is a low profile velocity module which measures water height and water speed to give us a total flow. It's capable of measuring water that's only one inch deep. So here we are in the bypass area. This area was designed for the situation of extreme storm events when precipitation levels couldn't be handled by the filtration system alone. 
The water would flow over this weir and out through the final bypass pipe directly to the ocean. This pipe is also instrumented with a velocity module. As well, we attached a water quality sign to this area that will measure temperature, conductivity, and pH. This is the pipe from the bypass area. Attached to it is a large tidal flap gate to prevent ocean water from flowing back through the system. Also attached to the filtration system are two other tide flap gates, again, to keep ocean water from flowing back through the filtration system. So here we are in the last area of the system where the water from the bypass area and the water from the filtration area would meet up before it exit to the ocean through these two pipes. This pipe is outfitted with another stainless steel scissor ring attached to which is a suction hose so that we can take water samples from the ISCO and take them back to the lab. Okay, so now we've got our water sample back at the lab. We're going to test it for indicator species of bacteria, Enterococcus and E. coli, using the IDEX samples of Enerlert and Collylert. We do this by adding 10 milliliters of this to a sterile water sample. And after that, we add the media. And this media will allow the bacteria to fluoresce under UV light. So now our media is dissolved. We're going to add it to our quantitry to seal. So now the samples run through the quanti sealer, and the sample has been equally distributed throughout all of these little cells. Now we've sealed our sample in the quanti tray, we're going to put it in an incubator for 24 hours. Now this is a water sample we took yesterday. It's been in the incubator for 24 hours, which has given the bacteria time to consume the media, which will allow them to fluoresce under UV light. When the sample is exposed to UV light, you can see that some of the cells fluoresce blue which means they're positive for Enterococcus. This is a control sample with no bacteria, and as you can see, none of the cells are fluorescent. This enables us to quantify the amount of colony forming units of bacteria in each water sample. Homeowners can help protect water quality by limiting stormwater runoff from their property. The installation of pervious pavement allows rainwater to infiltrate into the soil and limits runoff from the property. Cisterns and rain barrels capture runoff water from a roof or other catchment area and allow the water to be reused for irrigation, cleaning, or with filtration, it can be used for cooking, bathing, and drinking. Attractive landscape features such as rain gardens can be added to a property to intercept stormwater. The depressed shallow garden uses a combination of native plants, mulch, and soil to capture, filter, and treat stormwater. In addition, rain gardens can be low-maintenance landscape features due to the use of native plants that are resistant to both drought and wet conditions found after a rain event. For more information on what you can do to help protect water quality, please visit us on the web at csi.northcarolina.edu.